Well, this has been an exciting day. I just finished up the last bit of welding on the exterior of the body of the Carmen Ghia. So, just want to go around real quick and point out what's been done. Welded in a patch under here, a patch here. Uh, we welded in inner fender, outer fender, rocker panel, heater channel, stiffener, front fender patch here. We welded in, oh, let's go up front here, headlight, headlight bucket, smoothed in the grills, welded in a patch under here where everything had rotted out, a patch here that you can actually see, boy, that was bad, uh, patch here, welded in a new apron underneath, welded in a new headlight, skin and bucket on this side, fender patch here, rocker, heater channel, convertible stiffener, quarter panel, outer, inner, wheel arch, cut this piece, cut this off, and uh, or recut some of the welds here and redid them. They were horrible. They're not great, but they're better. New patch here. Uh, you can see where we came along the back on that patch. Had to rework this section in here. Then around back from this line over is fabricated. So this was hand fabricated back in here. New apron inside of here. Engine deck off of a 66 Ghia, I believe. Still haven't finished all the work in here. I'm hammering out the uh, inner wheel wells here to match this. A bunch of fabrication went on. New battery tray over here that we fabricated. Uh, the other piece is we took this complete. We took this fender, cut it completely off. And you can see the the scars here, and uh, had to fabricate some patches and some other things because uh, it was flat out welded on wrong uh, when somebody did their little repairs. So that's all the exterior pieces and I have a few people to thank on the list of people who gave me advice and hints and that sort of thing. Uh, Pete Hughes from Southwest Rod and Custom has been a complete inspiration. My wife's grandfather Cecil, my dad uh, Mike and uh, my friend Damon Smith helped me on a number of occasions lift the body and move things around. Uh, my wife's uncle Scott helped me uh, put in the rocker panels on this thing. And uh, let's see, Brian Stevenson, oh my goodness, uh, lent me his entire shop for uh, about two weeks and also helped me out and was an absolute tremendous help. The guy's done some incredible work on a number of cars and uh, was really invaluable in this whole process. Uh, the other piece we did here, oh, look at that. Cut the uh, rocker skins here and here so we could straighten them out because they were bowed. A lot of work went into the body of this car. So uh, been working on this project for about 13 years now and I'm trying to wrap it up this year. I guess these are other little things I forgot about. Uh, inner fender patches down there and uh, bumper brackets down in the, uh, we're in the engine bay here. Also, all these rails got replaced uh, in here. And one other person I have to thank too is my lovely wife who has put up with an absolute buttload of noise and uh, time for me being away from all my other duties that I would normally do as a husband, so uh, anyway, there we have it. Uh, fairly long list of people who've helped out, but what a what a little project. Okay, I've got the car DA down. Uh, it's nice and shiny, bright and silver. No more little red rust spots anywhere. Uh, today I'm taking a little bit of a leap of faith and uh, my friend Pete at Southwest Rod and Custom uh, recommends using vinegar and water and washing the car down with steel wool whenever you've gone down to bare metal. I have uh, honestly no reason or no 
uh, idea why. Uh, so I'm just doing this. I haven't done the research. Hopefully, uh, I don't imagine it'll screw the car up any. Pete's been doing it for eons. So here we go with the vinegar water. Then I've uh, swept out the garage, kind of cleared it out here. I'm going to wet down the floor. I've got a uh, box fan and some Oh uh, yeah, painter's plastic here, about 400 feet of this stuff, that's 12 feet. So I'm going to make a uh, big loop here in the garage and hopefully we're going to paint inside of that after I get the car washed down, wiped down, and uh, get the floor cleaned up and get the tarps up. I got my respirator on, got my little mixing station over here, got a gun full of DP, got a couple doors right here, you can see we're all tarped off, we're going to duck under, here's the car, I started taping it off, it's going to take me forever to do it. This is primer, so I'm not really worried if I get a little dust in it. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot. Holy cow, that was probably the most stressful two hours of my life. Uh, got the car sealed, it's all black. Oh, so we're in DP, PPG DP 90 LF, which is lead free, which they don't make it any other way. It's kind of dark in my garage. Uh, I learned a few things. I made my little cocoon and it wasn't near big enough to walk around the car. Wound up stepping on it and uh, in the middle of the painting process it started coming down, getting into the paint, uh, etc. What a, what a mess that was, but wound up making it through. Also had a uh, little water that it collected in some corners of the windshield, namely over here, so I had to wipe the paint off, dry the water up, move on to somewhere else and come back and paint that area, but so uh, started out with vinegar water, cleaned it up. Uh, I lied, I said I was going to use DX330, I think, which is the PPG product. I actually used this stuff here, which is our local brand. When I talked to the guy, he said it was the same thing. So vinegar water, dry it. Uh, final clean, wipe on with one towel, wipe off with another, and that's uh, the final prep, grease and wax remover, metal cleaner, etc., etc. Then uh, hit it with the DP90. I was going to mask everything off. I'm really glad I didn't. Uh, the overspray was so minimal, and I ran the gun at about 10 PSI, so uh, there was almost no pressure coming out of the gun, and uh, it painted like a dream except towards the end of the gun, I, I forgot to strain everything. That was another thing I learned. Forgot to put my strainer in there, and towards the end of the gun, it started loading up on goop. So, uh, whatever, I got a little, some spots that are a little more rough than others. But again, we're going over this with polyester, so I don't think that's any too big of a deal. Got both of the doors painted. I also have a gas cap somewhere. Shit, I don't know where I put it. Oh, I put it up inside the hood. So, I just, uh, squirted a coat of DP90 on there just to seal it up and uh, that's that. Hopefully when the sun's shining I'll drag it outside and maybe take some pictures.